Hello everybody, and today we are looking at the Ray 3710A, and this is a DC electronic load. Now the reason I'm doing this video is I posted a picture of this um, on Facebook just after Christmas, and it's a present I got myself, and there was quite a lot of interest from people wanting to know what it does, how it works, and what the quality of it's like. So this is basically just like a, an initial impression, basically showing the quality of it, showing the user interface, seeing how easy it is to use and giving a couple of demonstrations on how it will be used. So let's get on with it. It's a fairly straightforward front control panel, main power switch here, LCD, it's backlit green LCD display, uh, numeric input here for directly inputting the current, um, that's the load on and off switch there. You can set resistance, so constant resistance, constant current, or constant power. Uh, these to move your decimal place. Rotary encoder to basically adjust on the fly. OK and cancel buttons. And then two very hefty binding posts for connecting your source. And so if we turn the unit around, you can see that basically on both sides um, you have this handle. It's actually pretty sturdy but it's hard to pull it out. So you've got carry handle there and the same on the other side as well. And then if we look at the rear of the unit, fairly simple, nothing interesting. Basically IUC mains input, switchable input power, I think it does 120 or 240, and that's a TTL serial port. Now there's some uh, software that comes with this, but if you want to connect it to the PC you need an isolated TTL serial converter. This is basically TTL serial and it's non-isolated, so you're basically connecting your source ground to your computer ground, so you don't want to do that, you need to isolate it. Um, two fans on the back, we turn it over, we've got two fans on the bottom, and quite a sturdy carrying handle, well, desk stand handle really. So I'll put it there. That's quite a good quality, that. Very sturdy. It's quite good construction, or at least it feels very solid. It's all metal, apart from the plastic front. Um, it's quite heavy. Looks pretty well made, all screwed together. So, initial, initial impressions of the quality are pretty good. I did a bit of research into these loads before I bought this, and I deliberately bought this one um, as it's, as it, you know, it, out of the cheaper models, it's known for pretty good quality. Well, it's made by a, a Taiwanese company based in China, um, but this is, you know, initial impressions are this is a, a good example of when China can actually make things properly, um, if they're making it to a quality rather than to a price point. So let's uh, let's have a look at how it works. Right, so I've applied mains power now. So let's power up the unit. Main switch here. That was the system initialization, only takes a second or so. Um, the, screen, the screen's actually like a bright green backlight. You probably won't see it very well with the, the lighting that's on that's shining on it at the moment. Okay, so powered up, and uh, we sit on the screen with everything showing zeros. That OF there is output off, I believe, and we can toggle that with the uh, output on off, so the load on off switch there. That's on, that's off. So that's our current, that's our voltage, that's power in watts. I believe that's the set amps. I think you can change that. So set ohm, set amps, or set power. That's that, that section there. Now I haven't actually read the instruction manual before doing this video, as any piece of lab equipment should be easy enough to use. Basically, you know, figuring it out from the controls yourself. If you need, if you need to read a manual to work out how to work a multimeter or an oscilloscope or a, or a DC load, then it's not been designed properly. It should be anyone who knows what a DC load is should be able to pick it up, switch it on, and work out how to set some simple parameters. So we'll try that now. So basically, um, on like the main home screen, so R set, so set resistance. So the current value is 500 ohms, and it wants a new value. So if we put 100. Zero, zero, OK, uh, let's press the OK button. That seems to have set it, but we're still on this screen. What do we have to do now? Escape. Yeah, so I think you have to, hmm, that's slightly counterintuitive. So you press OK to set it and then to leave the set screen, you just have to press ESC. Let's try that again a different way. Um, we've got 200 ohms. Right, 200 ohms, OK. And then if we press maybe R set again, no. So it does seem you have to press escape to get back out. I will check that in the manual, but 
Uh, slight annoyance, other than that it seems fairly simple. I uh, assume the same will apply for current. So we'll have oh, no. I set, so new value 1, so it should be 1 amp I would have thought. Yep, yeah. and we press escape and we set 1 amp. Okay, that's kind of what we want. And power, so we can set 100 watts, let's say. Oh, power set 100. And OK, ESC, OK, oh, it's set for 99.9 .9 for some reason there, not sure why it's done that, I must have nudged that wheel, yeah, that's all I did. OK, um, right, that's the, the basic functionality of it really. So after you've set your initial parameters, what you want to do, you might want to adjust it on the fly, so you've got these cursor arrows here, so you can move the cursor. So we move it right across there to the 1, and then when we turn this dial, we can do 2, 3, oh, I think it's up to 200. Uh, let's take that down to 1, so we move it to the second digit. So yeah, it's as simple as that. So we basically move it to the digit we want, and we can turn it up and down. It doesn't just change that digit, it actually, so if you're 196 now, and we go below 190, it goes to 189 rather than just looping back around to zero. So that's actually quite nice. So I can adjust it in 1 watt increments, or I can do it in 0.1 watt. So what we do is we put a resistance set. Let's do 10 ohms. Oh, I'll do it wrong again. R set, 10. OK. Escape. Right. So resistance is set 10 ohms. Now, when I'm on a lower range, it seems I've got two decimal point precision. So I can do it, to, yeah, to two decimal points. Does it go lower than that? Let's try again. R set, do one ohm. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's still two. So two decimal point precision on the ohms. What do we get on the uh, current? Let's do uh, one amp. Two decimal points on the amps, I assume, is it the same on power, or is it just one on power? Let's put a low value in. One watt. Yeah, so it's point 0.1 on the watts. Right, as you're all bored of me waffling on now, let's do something more interesting. We'll actually power something up and see what it does. So I've introduced my Chinese uh, cheapo bench power supply and my shiny load tester. Let's see which one smokes first, eh? Uh, no, nah, they're both decent enough quality, they should be fine. Basically, just the positive and negative coming out of the power supply and going straight into these binding posts here with some crop clips, nothing complicated. So we'll power on the power supply and we will power on the load tester as well. There we go, initialised. Right, so currently no amps, uh, oh, 0.2 volts, that's showing zero. Nice, that's not particularly uh, well calibrated, but uh, it'll do. Um, nothing's set, and there's no no watts, there's no current actually flowing through it at the moment. Okay, so let's set something on here. So we'll set, set a voltage. Put up to 1.1, we immediately see 1.151 there. That's how, I, I trust this, this is actually quite a high precision instrument. So we obviously we'll trust this voltage display here more than we do this one. But what I will do in a second follow-up video is I'll actually compare it to some more accurate multimeters. Um, we can see if this is actually accurate or not. I, su I suspect it probably will be. Um, right, so, 1.1, let's turn it up a bit more. It's actually very responsive. I don't know how well it comes across on the camera. But look at this. this. This updates like once a second. This is updating in the microvolts. Look at that, really precise. Do it on the fire just. That's a very nice fast update, I do like that. So let's set it to. Oh, what was that then? Oh. Ah, right, okay. So let's turn it down. So when you're below 4 volts, you've got three digits, up, three, three decimal places of precision there. But once you get to 4 volts, you hear a relay click, and it seems to switch over to a second circuit, which is for the, obviously for the higher voltage ranges, and it's actually got two digits of precision. So let's do that again. So when we get to 4, see, so we get past 4, goes down to two digits. Under 4, three digits. 
So it seems like they've got a different circuit that switches in and out there basically based on the voltage. And let's turn it all the way up. There we go, so the power supply seems to be able to put out up to 31.5, it's a 30 volt 3 amp power supply. So let's go back down and set it again to 5 as we originally were going to do. Sorry, bear with me. Oh, 5.01, is that close enough? Ah, that's going to annoy me, that. <laughs> ah, 5.01 is going to do, I can't bother get any closer than that. Right, so, 5 volts coming out of this power supply and no current currently being consumed. Let's set some current, shall we? I set 1, press OK, press ESC, and it's now set to 1 amp, 5 volts 1 amp. That should obviously give us 5 watts if we look at Ohm's law. Let's switch on the output and see what happens. Okay, nothing particularly exciting, but the current is now showing 1 amp, it's showing 4.9 watts and it's showing it's set current there, 1 amp. There's actually been a slight voltage drop there when we powered this on, obviously again this is not going to be particularly accurate, so uh, especially not when it's loaded, so let's just adjust that, fine tune it in. There we go, 5.0, 5 watts, 1 amp. Right, let's do something different now. So let's switch that off. We now switch over to constant power mode. Right, it's defaulted it to 10 watts. Let's do, um, so if we press it again, that allows us to set it, we'll put 5 watts, press OK, press escape. That's giving me 10. Why have you done that? Power. New value, 5, OK, escape, OK, I don't know what I did there wrong, I must have missed press something. Right, so we've got it set to 5 watts, so that actually should do exactly the same thing, switch it on, going 5 watts, which is practically 1 amp, I know it's not quite right, because this, this is not outputting an accurate voltage, it jumps up and down when I switch the load on and off. So there you go, now we could set 10, 10 watts, 10 watts obviously is 2 amps at 5 volts, so let's see if that comes out okay. 2.021, again this is not, that's actually showing 2.2, .2. yeah this is out quite a bit, this supply. So again I'll actually follow this up and test the precision of this, but let's assume this is correct at the minute. So it's dropped down slightly 4.9 volts as this voltage drop as the current increases. 10 watts, as easy as that. Okay, and then the final function, we can set a constant resistance, so off, resistance, press it again to set, so let's put 100 ohms, say OK, escape, and we switch on, so we're drawing 0.3 watts, that's 0.05 amps at 5 volts on a 100 ohm load. Let's try, let's do doing some adjustments. So, we move the decimal point, we'll do it in ones. So we can spin this, we can drop it down to 26 ohms, 7 ohms, we get 0.6 ohms, 5 ohms, 4 ohms. You see the current's rising rapidly now, so we're getting 1.24 amps, nearly 5 volts, 4 ohms, drop it down, 3 ohms, 2 ohms, ah, massive jump now, so 2.4 amps. Now I think if we go to 1 ohm it's going to trip the power supply out because it won't like trying to draw more than 3.5 amps. There we go. 1 ohm the power supply killer mode. You can see it's jumping up and down now as it's, it's basically hitting its overcurrent protection. Oh, that's moved it back to 2 ohms. It obviously worked out I didn't like that. Will it not stay on 1? Yeah, that's basically annoying the power supply now as we're overcurrenting it, the overcurrent protection is kicking in and it's switching off, it's waiting a second and it's switching back on. So that's, as we know, power supply killer mode for the one ohm test. Let's turn it off because I don't want to actually kill the power supply. So there we go, that's off. Now another thing I like about this particular model is it's got fairly um, generous specifications. 
it does not to 360 volts DC. Very few of these will actually go to 360. Now I don't actually need 360, but I would actually need this to measure circuits up to 200 volts. And there are very few that will do 200, especially not in the lower price brackets. Um, and it will do up to 30 amps, but there's a maximum of 150 watts. So, this is the fun bit now where we're going to stress everything out and see if anything decides to smoke or not. Uh, this is only a 90 watt power supply, so it's not going to really stress this load tester out. I should probably wire up something more powerful for, the, for a further test, but this will do for now. So, let's uh, set the voltage up. Um, right, so it's let me put up to 31.5. It's actually a 30, so 30 volt, 3 amp supply, but it does give you a little bit extra. Same, I believe this will actually do a bit more than 150. Um, right, so let's turn everything up to the max. Let's set the current. So 1 amp, that will do nicely. We'll switch that on. So 1 amp at 31.45 volts. 31 watts. Now let's use the adjustment wheel. Let's put it on that second. So, first decimal point. So, let's give it a twist. That's 2 amps. Voltage is dropping slightly as we expect with this cheapy. Let's just check these uh, leads out. They're actually quite cool. Let's uh, crank it up. 2.5 amps. Both of these have got active fans that will kick in if anything gets too hot, so as we get towards the limit we'll probably see that happen. Let's stick it on free. I do like how we can quickly adjust this on the fly. Oh, there's another relay click then. Ah, as you get to 3 amps, we lose a digit of position. We've got 3 digits of position there on the amps. We go to 3, relay click, and we lose, we're down to 2 digits. That makes sense that when, you, when you're looking at high voltage, if you're measuring 360 volts, you don't really need to do things to, you know, three digits of precision. So you, two or one, even one's probably enough at that voltage. Whereas if you're looking at, say, the core voltage of an FPGA at 1.2 volts, you probably want it to be very precise. So, we're drawing three amps at 31. There's 93 watts. This is a 90 watt power supply, so we're actually exceeding its maximum. Let's see if anything interesting happens. Everything's uh, everything's pretty cool still. Let's uh, let's see if this will take any more abuse. Ninety-seven watts, one hundred watts. Oh, didn't like that. <laughs> Something's tripped out. Let's just switch that output off. Drop it down to three point two again. Back on. So straight on at three. So it's a hundred watts straight away. We can switch that off. Back down to zero and recovers quickly, straight back up to 100 watts. So, uh, yeah, so I'm 10 watts over on the power supply already. This is going to annoy it. It's, uh, the fan's not kicked in, it's not getting warm. I'm expecting some fans to kick in. I mean, this, like, so this is a 150 watt load, and we're running 100, and it's uh, stone cold. I'll pause the video for a minute. And we'll leave this running for a few minutes, see if the fans do kick in at all. And there we go. You can hear fan noises now. That was about three minutes actually until that kicked in. Oh, it's gone off again. Huh. So the fan's obviously quite powerful as it's managed to cool it down enough to switch the fan off again. So it's about three minutes till it came on. Let's see if it comes back on again pretty much straight away or not. Yeah, it's obviously uh, obviously sufficient cooling to actually uh, get that heatsink temperature back down again. The actual casing's stone cold. So is this. And the fan hasn't even kicked in on this power supply. We're running it at 100 watts, which is over, 10 watts over its maximum. <laughs> it's obviously possible that the fan doesn't even work on this. Um, yeah, that's, that's suspicious why the fan isn't kicking in. Uh, yeah, that's not, that's not coming back on yet. Stone cold. Very nice. Here we go. The fans are starting back up again. You hear there's a first fan on and it seems to go to a second stage. Um, well, it hasn't done it yet. It's still on the first one. Come on. 
yeah, it doesn't actually spend very much time with the fans on. So, like I say, it's, it's really not stressed at all. Um, and, and the fans do seem to bring the, the heating temperatures down to an acceptable level very quickly. It's still only on its first fan. So, I'm actually surprised that this is surviving for so long, being overrun. So it says 3.4 ounce, which is actually putting 3.2 at 31.3 volts out, which is 100.2 watts. Now the second fan isn't coming on. Let's see what the heat sink. All right, so what's currently on is the fans underneath seem to be blowing the air up, but the fans on the back are not actually running. I'm kind of hoping they're going to kick in while the video is running. No, it's still only running on the first lot of fans. Let's uh, drop this gun off again. Just uh, drop that down and impede the airflow a little bit. That might make the second set of fans come on. Oh, it's off. I'll have to wait a few minutes again. Oh, it's been a while and the fan hasn't come on again. So, I think we've proven two things. This power supply is actually pretty tough. Oh, here we go. There you go, both sets of fans are on. Because I restricted the airflow by putting this flat, yeah, you can definitely feel that. The, the air is actually not that warm, it's only slightly warm, but it's quite powerful with these two fans on at the back now. Uh, it's slightly noisier than before, it's just the bottom fans, but obviously like I say, once you, if you do that, it tries to force more air through your unit. So let's put it back on the stand. It, it does surprise me how quickly it cools down. So both of these seem to be pretty robust. I can't believe this is not dying, running at 100 watts continuously for quite a while now. Um, yeah, this does not really get warm. Warm air coming out the back, but the case is pretty cold. It seems to be working quite well. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that at least slightly interesting.